Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. Now Nissi have sent me their latest filter holder system, the V7, plus a few accessories to review. Let's take a look. Nissi have kindly sent me a selection of products to show you today. Yes, I do get to keep them, but if you've seen any of my previous reviews, you'll know that these are my own genuine, honest opinions. Now, we're going to be doing some real world tests. We're going to do a bit of pixel peeping. We're looking for good optical quality. And secondly, what they are like to use in a real world situation. Now they've sent me a few things. The filter holder system itself, this is the V7, comes with a carry case, a polarizing filter, and also a filter cap. They've sent me three filters. One of them is a 10 stop and the other two are grad filters. And finally, the filter carry case itself. Let's start by talking about the filter holder system. Like most large filter systems, this accommodates 100 millimeter filters and can withstand a 15 millimeter full frame lens without vignetting. I'll test this later to see if this is the case. Inside the box are step down filters with thread sizes 67, 72, 77, and the 82 millimeter filter thread size is built into the adapter itself. Other sizes are sold separately. A carry case is included with the filter holder. It's got a Velcro lid and holds the filter holder, adapter rings and the polarizer, but no filters. The case is quite rigid and has a strap on the back, which will allow you to thread a belt through it or attach it to your tripod leg, which is a nice touch. It didn't come with any instructions, but I'm told that it's splash proof. On the topic of carry cases, Nissi have also sent me their filter holder case, which holds five larger filters and four square filters. It has a soft suede feel to the inside and it comes with a Velcro flap and a small zip section that would be good to hold a camera remote or a cable release. This can be used as a means of transporting your filters inside your bag or it comes with a strap so that you can wear it over your shoulder or once again, attach it to your tripod. If you're coming from an older filter system like me, I think mine is coming up for eight years old now, then you'll notice that modern designs quite rightly put the polarizer at the back of the holder, closest to the lens. This is because in order to use a wide angle lens on an older filter system, you had to invest in a massive polarizer, like this one, which is 105 millimeters. Because the further you step away from the front of the lens, the larger the filters have to get to avoid being in the frame. But don't worry, even though the polarizer on the Nissi system is tucked at the back and will be covered up by your other filters, you can still turn the polarizer with the wheels on the side of the holder. The Nissi filter system will hold a total of three filters and the polarizer at the back. Since this takes universal size filters, you can use your other brand filters with the holder. The filter holder is aluminium and it comes in black or black. The polarizer has several white markers on it. You simply align the markers, push and twist. To make sure that it's in tightly, you put your fingers over the two wheels to stop it from spinning. From here, you can spin the polarizer for the desired effect. Like all polarizers, you should be careful when using them with a wide angle lens and the effect will vary depending upon your position to the sun. We'll test this when we head outside. This particular polarizer is described as a true tone filter, therefore the assumption is it shouldn't create any color cast. Once again, we'll test this when we head outside. The grad filters that Nissi have sent me are two stop, one with a hard edge and another with a soft edge. The filters are made of glass, they have beveled edges and some subtle writing at the top that tell you which filter you've picked up. The pouches that they are supplied with have a soft internal lining, but I am told by Nissi that for the best protection, the filters should be transported in a filter case. According to the spec card on the back of the pouch, the filters have an ultra low color cast, they block infrared and have a nano coating that repels water and oil, which is very handy if you shoot seascapes and sea spray constantly lands on your gear. The 10 stop filter is also glass, comes in a slightly smaller case and has similar specifications to the grad filter, with the color being described as true to life color. We will also review the color rendition of this filter later when we head down to the beach. And finally, this rubberized filter cap, which is included with the V7 filter kit. This allows you to keep your adapter ring on your favorite lens, keeping dust off the front, and when you arrive on location, you can just whip it off and there's no faffing around screwing in filters. Just snap on the filter holder system and you're ready to go. Right, that's enough talking. Let's go down to the beach and take some photos. I've come down to Brighton Seafront to photograph, obviously my favorite subject, which is the West Pier. The reason I've chosen this is because it's good for using grad filters because the sky is much brighter than the foreground and then secondly long exposures because you've got the movement of the water it's quite cold this morning and windy it's a good opportunity to see if this filter system is fiddly at all and whether or not i can actually use it with these thin gloves on let's set up the camera
Like most filter systems, first of all, you need to attach the adapter ring to the front of your lens, and that will depend upon the filter size of your lens itself. By default, the adapter ring out of the box is 82 millimeters, and then inside the box, you get these step-down rings. So I need a 77 millimeter to fit to this 24 to 105. So typically you just leave that on there if you're using the same lens all the time. From here, I'm gonna try and do this backwards. I have not taken my gloves off, okay? So I've done all of this with the gloves on. Quite a few turns. All right, so that is now securely on. Now, if you wanted to use a polarizer, it's at this point that you would put it on. This is quite fiddly because the polarizer, as you can probably see, is really, really thin. Uh, it's got some white markings on it and essentially you just have to line up the white markings on here and you turn it. Oh, that's in. Okay, I didn't think I was going to be able to do that with gloves, but that was totally possible. So it's got these two wheels on the side and as you can see, as I turn this, the polarizing filter turns. Now in order to put the filter holder on, quite simply, you approach it from the side, you pull on this lever and then that is securely in. It's as simple as that. And if you turn this here, you can no longer pull the lever on the side. So that stops you accidentally knocking off the filters. Sun's up, so I'm gonna take some photographs in a second. Right, so once you've got your filter holder system set up, the next thing you need to do is obviously put your filters in and it's very, very straightforward, like pretty much every other filter system. So the filter holder has got ridges in it and you just align it and then you push it down into position. Simple as that. Now, the ideal filters have amazing optical quality and zero color cast. A lot of companies out there claim that their filters have no color cast. We're going to test that today. I'm going to use this white card. I'm going to take a photograph of this, create a custom white balance, take a photograph with no filters, then I'm going to use the polarizing filter, then the grad filters, and then the 10 stop filters. And then when we get back home, we'll do a bit of pixel peeping and we'll see if any of these filters have a color cast. These are all unedited photographs straight out of camera. I kept the ISO and the aperture the same throughout and I adjusted the shutter speed to maintain the correct exposure. This is the original image which is well exposed without any grad filters at all but for the purpose of this experiment here is the same scene with a soft grad and now with a hard grad. Apart from the sky being unnaturally dark I am not seeing any colour cast but I wouldn't expect to on a grad filter anyway. Here is the original image again and now with the polarizer. And although this is having very little effect at polarization because it's sunrise, the purpose of this test is to check for color cast. And I'm not seeing any change in white balance with the polarizer. And finally, the 10 stop filter, where a color cast is usually evident. Here is the original image again, and now the 10 stop filter. I brought both of the images into Photoshop and I clicked the eyedropper tool onto some sections of the waves, which would be white. And you can see there's a very minor difference between the base image with no filters and then the 10 stop filter. But overall, it's a very good performance from the Nitty 10 stop filter. If you're interested to see whether the filter has any influence upon optical quality, here is the original image and then the 10 stop filter, both at 100%. Now, if you look at the detail on the railings at the top of the image, there is no degradation of the image with the 10 stop filter. Another great performance. Since polarizers don't have such an influence at the beginning and the end of the day, I went out in the midday sun and took some shots with the sun at 90 degrees to the scene. This time I set the white balance to sunny on both of the shots at 24 millimeters. This is the base image with no filters. You can see that we have some white clouds and an off-white chalky path leading in from the bottom right hand corner. Here is the image with the polarizer and you will immediately see a boost in saturation, a darker sky on the right hand side this is just a knock-on effect of using wide-angle lenses with polarizers, but the good news is that the clouds have remained white. So the filter has lived up to its name of being true to the color of the scene. But what about even wider lenses? Do you get any vignetting with the filter system? Nissi claims up to 15 millimeters. The widest angle lens that I have is a 16 to 35, and what you're looking at here is the image shot at 16 millimeters, full frame, with no filter holder system at all. Followed by, the polarizer, followed by the complete filter system with a grad filter. As you can see, the filter holder system itself has not appeared in the corner of any of these shots. Therefore, it's safe to say that you can definitely shoot up to 16 millimeters without any issues of vignetting. 
Okay, now that's all over and we've got all the boring tests out of the way, here are a selection of images that I've created over the past few weeks with the Nissi Grad and 10 stop filters. Enjoy. typically use one lens and I would recommend you actually get their filter cap the reason being is you can keep the uh, adapter ring on your lens the whole time and you can just use this rubberized filter cap and you can just transport it around in your camera bag like that so I think that that's that's a massive time saver because on cold mornings like today it's screwing the filter and adapter on that is the that's the tricky part and I don't know if this is why it's designed like this but because it's rubber it actually can do pretty good grip so if you want to take off the filter adapter ring then you just use the filter cap look one of the times that I ventured out at sunrise using these filters I was caught out by the rain but on a positive note I got to see and photograph a rainbow which is nice but it was actually a good opportunity for me to test out how these filters behave when water droplets get on them and uh, to add insult to injury I forgot my lens cleaning cloth as well I actually had to resort to using my t-shirt to clean them as you can see from this video clip here that I filmed on my phone I was very surprised at how easily the water just came off these filters and it didn't smear across them either it literally whatever coating they've put on these filters water is not interested in staying on these filters this actually might be one of my favorite features of these filters now that brings me nicely on to some of the improvements, the recommendations that I've put forward to Nissi. There aren't many, but I think that these would literally just take it up a notch. This would make it perfect, okay? First of all, really easy win. Could you provide a lens cleaning cloth with the filters themselves? It could be branded, free advertising, easy win. My second suggestion is to do with the filter carry case. I really do like this case, but as you can see here, this is kind of a landscape format. The filters are 150 millimeters long and they go in sideways. In order to get the filters out, I have to pinch the filter and I'm holding the filter in the middle. And I am pretty confident I've got greasy fingers. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to clean my filter each and every time I take it out of the case. If it was me, I'd probably redesign this at its portrait format so that you can actually take the filters out from the end because the end is not actually in your photograph. It's just the central 100 millimeters that's in the photograph. And even if you don't get the filter carry case itself, the filters come in these quite nice leather pouches. Um, but you still have to touch the filter in order to get it out. So I think there's still a risk that you're gonna get your fingerprints in your photograph. And finally, the filter holder bag itself comes with the V7 kit. And if you turn it around, you can see it's got this attachment to wrap it around your tripod. This is really handy, especially if you're shooting seascapes, you can be in shallow water and then you don't have to put your camera bag down on the floor because you've got access to your filter holder. But my issue is that if you intend on putting this inside your camera bag, this does actually take up quite a lot of space for essentially holding a very slim filter holder. Now this is made of aluminium. I'm quite comfortable putting this inside a camera bag. It's robust, it's going to survive. So me personally, I don't think I'll be using this to carry the filter holder. This will live in my camera bag and I'll be using the filter holder pouch to put the polarizer in it and all of my filters. So if you combine these two, this actually took up half of my camera bag. So ideally, they could make one pouch that holds all of your filters and then in a separate compartment, the filter holder itself. Other than those minor suggestions I'm putting forward, this would be my number one recommended filter holder system if anybody were to ask me. I think that the filters optically are fantastic. It's nice to be using glass filters again. The filter holder system itself, really well designed, polarizers included. In terms of optical quality of the polarizer again, you've seen the results. There's no color cast to be speaking about. Out of all of the filters I've used here, it's only the 10 stop that had a slight color cast very easily corrected, um, but otherwise 
absolutely neutral. One final point which I do have to bring up because it really did elevate the experience when opening this. Now, if anybody owns any Apple products and you'll know what that experience is like, I would say opening the filters from Nissi was the same as an Apple product. When you open the Nissi filters, for example, you open the box and there's a leather pouch. You open the leather pouch and inside is the filter, but it's wrapped up beautifully in paper. That paper is held together with a label. You open that and it reveals the filter. And the whole experience just elevated it. First impressions, this was very good. If you are thinking about picking up any of these products, I'll put a link in the description. That is an affiliate link. Thank you to Nissi for supporting my photography channel and I'll put these filters to good use. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.